Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Stephanie. This is the week 40, September the 27th through October the 3rd's weekly wrap up. So for all of you guys that don't know, um, this is the lifestyle portion and for some of you, you probably figured out I don't actually have a script for this. Um, I wake up, uh, as a matter of fact, this morning, I was up at like six o'clock and my body was like, okay, it's time to go record your video and, you know, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Uh, it didn't happen. Um, it's like 7.30 now. Uh, but I did need to get this recorded and edited and rendered and everything like that for you guys because if you didn't know tonight, unless you were watching this later on in the week, uh, tonight, Sunday, October the 4th, I will be on a live show with Brie, Brie, Zaid, Zaya, Zaya, and Avery for the Kindle Clear Out live show. Uh, it ends tonight if you weren't participating. Uh, this week was amazing because of it. Uh, yeah, lots of books to talk about. Uh, but where I was going with that is that um, I don't write a script for my lifestyle portion. I just kind of get up and get in front of the camera and hopefully I'm funny and engaging and, you know, tell you guys a little bit about my life and things like that. Uh, so I have so much going through my head, like so much, so much going through my head. And half the time I end up not talking about what I wanted to talk about because, yeah, that's just how it goes because I don't script this part of it. I just go off the cuff. I don't even do bullet points. I'm just like, okay, what do I want to talk about? What happened in my week? And things like that. So... Yeah, this week, how did it start off? It started off okay. I don't think I had any major breakdowns this week. Um, online schooling is online schooling. It's, it's, uh, woo, I can't wait. I can't wait, can't wait, can't wait until they go back to the 50% model. Although I am still kind of scared that, um, you know, we might be hit with COVID because uh, the second wave is coming. I don't care. I'm not a freaking medical professional, but I know it's coming. I know it's coming. If not the third, because I'm pretty sure that whole breakout and hot spots that we had, you know, back in the beginning of summer or in the middle of the summer or whatever, um, was probably the second wave. And now we're going to have a third wave and then people are going to confuse all the symptoms with the flu and not know and then expose other people. And whoo, yeah, yeah. So I woke up and found or saw a tweet about Dr. Fauci saying that, you know, get, you know, get ready, people, it, it's coming. And, you know, yeah, kind of believe him, kind of believe him. Um, the other thing that was on my mind was that, um, so I put out a poll yesterday over on Instagram. And if you aren't following me on Instagram, all my socials are down in the description box, along with a slew of other stuff. Um, so just make sure you're checking the description boxes of my videos, because there's lots of good information down there. Um, but yeah, so I asked a story, or, or story, 15 seconds, yeah, story, um, over on Instagram about if I post too much or if I don't post enough or, you know, do I need to slow down? That's what it was. Do I post a lot? You like the amount of posts that I do when I like get in my groove and like start posting like crazy, almost spamming, or do I need to slow down? Right. And like 73% of you guys said, you know, keep it up. Love the content. It's great. It's awesome. Because Instagram is all about the visual and, you know, I like to do a lot of the reels and a lot of the stories and when I'm doing my check-ins and stuff like that. I think it's great. Um, but then I had a couple people and I reached out to them and was like, you know, hey, what do you mean by, you know, I need to slow down, what have you? Is it that it doesn't show up in your timeline or is it that, you know, what, 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 what? And this very, very, very smart and wonderful young person decided to let me know um, in that discussion and I greatly appreciate them because I have found their maturity and their insight to the young people world because I'm, I'm of a mature age. Um, <laughs> yes, or grown folks, grown folk. That's, I like that term, grown folk. I'm a grown folk. 
Um, and, uh, you know, they told me, you know, hey, I am more of a, um, oh, what they call it, uh, a listening person. I couldn't, I do, auditory. There we go. An auditory person, right? And I'm like, okay, then that makes sense. Then the clips of watching pictures or movement don't really appeal to you. It's all about my voice and hearing me explain and talk and think things like that. I get that. I understand that. Thank you for letting me in on that. And, you know, I wasn't narrow-minded to think that I didn't have all these different sorts of learners and things like that. But it now makes more sense why some people would vote for me to slow down on the content over there on Instagram with posting the pictures and the reels and things like that because it's all visual. It's all about um, putting the clips together and making it flow and telling a story through visual contact. Um, and yes, this platform is about visual as well because we're doing videos. These are videos, right? And um, But I'm also talking. I'm also speaking to you and, you know, telling you my story and, you know, talking about the books and telling you how I feel about them. So yeah, there's that. So I greatly appreciate that insight and everything like that. Then it got me thinking about um, how my book friends, I love them. And I love my regular friends too. So I am one of those people that... My husband and I were talking, and I think I mentioned this in a couple weeks ago. I'm not exactly sure, lifestyle portion. But we figured out that I am an omnivert, right? I don't even know if that's the correct term for it or whatever, but I most definitely am that because I have a best friend. She is my best friend. Best, 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 best friend, right? And we live in two different states. We barely talk. But if she was to call me and say, Steph, I need you to pack up the gear because I'm in trouble or something has happened, then I'm going to drop everything for her and go see her. Now, I do have a handful of those people in my life. And then there's some book friends that it's almost like the same sort of way, right? Um, that, you know, we could go a couple days without actually talking about books, but we know each other's lives and, um, you know, we can discuss other things besides books. So I don't know where I was going with that, but yes, love those people and just want to send a shout out that, you know, it's, it's not you, it's me, it's who I am. Um, like I was saying about the whole omnivert type thing, right? So you have extroverts who are like outgoing and just woo in your face sort of people, you know, sometimes. And then you have introverts who are like, I can be by myself. I want to be by myself. Please leave me alone. Stop talking to me. And then you have me, which is an introvert. And um, I'm like, if I'm there, I'm there. I'm, I'm that extrovert, right? I'm like, wow, yes. Party, party. Woo, woo, woo. woo through this whole quarantine, I'm like sitting at home like, ha, 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 woo, got a reason to stay home. Yes. And not do anything but read. I'm good. Um, Dave, why are you trying to talk to me while I'm reading my book? So yeah, there's that. Real ramble. But let's open a package that I didn't know I had come in because Dave didn't tell me I had one come in. And... This, ooh, that sucks. Okay, this should be interesting. Not sure why they sent it to me, but we will see. So we have um, from Hachette, um, and I think it's, I want to say it is from Grand Central, but I'm not exactly sure. But it most definitely is from Hachette. Um, yeah, Grand Central Publishing. We have a nonfiction book called Unapologetically Ambitious 
take risks, break barriers, and create success on your own terms by Shelly uh, Archambault. I think that's it. Um, it should be interesting. I'm kind of interested in it, I think. Um, it says, it takes the boldest next step you can with empowering wisdom from one of Silicon Valley's first female African-American CEOs. So <laughs> right there, I'm now interested. Definitely going to be reading this one and checking it out. Uh, November's coming up, so non-fic, non-fic, ow, non-fic November. I'll probably check this one out. So thank you, Grand Central, for sending that away, or sending that my way. And I also won a book, some book stuff from the wonderful, amazing, fabulous Sierra Simone. Uh, so I can't wait to dive into this because it most definitely is packaged well. And it is a, a copy of Naughty Brits, which is an anthology with stories from Sarah McLean, Sophie Jordan, Louisa Edwards, Tessa Gratton, and Sierra Simone. Super excited to dive into this one. Yes, because these are all stories that I have not read from these authors. And I'm super excited to read them. And, oh crap, Sierra signed it for me. So excited about that so that is the book mail for uh this week um and things like that i must say that was pretty anticlimactic let's get into the books that i read last week uh because i can't make this long because i got a whole bunch of books that i need to tell you guys about 10 of them as a matter of fact i started the book i started the week off finishing darkwood manor which is shiver number four by jenna ryan uh, this is a romantic suspense with mystery. Um, it is part of the Harlequin intrigue line and I was super uh, interested in finding out more about this and then when I found out it was book four I was like oh no oh no I might have done something bad but it wasn't it wasn't I give this book four stars I give it two steam fans I listen to it as an audiobook in audible escape which will be going away so sad. <laughs> so sad. This was also my first book for the Kindle Clear Out uh, Readathon that I'm co-hosting um, with Brie and everyone else that I named off earlier. Um, so this book follows Isabella and Donovan. Isabella got, gets, ooh, inherits this manor, this creepy, creepy place um, that the town is like, oh, it's cursed. It's cursed because everyone that like owns it ends up dying. And there's uh, some mental health issues that are involved in this book and um, curses, like I said, some spookiness. It was a really intriguing book for it to be in the romance intrigue line. Um, I was like, yes, yes, it definitely fit the bill. Love the cover and uh, it really enjoyed the story. So Donovan is an FBI agent that is helping Isabella figure out what is actually going on and uh, he's actually part of the curse as well. So uh, it's a whole family thing and it was really interesting, really interesting. So the next book that I read, I'm gonna try not to get super emotional over, but was Bared Souls by Ellie Wade. I placed this in a new adult love story. Just to give you guys a heads up, love story. Um, I'm giving it five stars. I am giving it three steam fans. It was kind of steamy. Um, and I had it as an arc, but it is live, so you can go out and get it. Uh, this book follows 
Elma and Leo and I don't want to say too much about the story. It is very much an epic story and something that you should sort of experience. Um, I will give you the content warnings for drug use, child abuse, sexual abuse, um, child neglect, emotional abuse, uh, overcoming, and, uh, you know, possessiveness, trauma. A lot, I mean, those are very, very much at the forefront of this book. Um, I will also say that even though there are going to be uncomfortable moments within this story, um, push through, set it down, take a moment. Um, this was the, this is the book that I, uh, actually did a live sort of like reading sprint, uh, over on Instagram, uh, this week. And you guys actually get to see my facial expressions and, uh, the moment that I get to a certain part in a book, in the book. And it just wrecked me, wrecked me. And, uh, you know, I really, really felt this book. Uh, I actually got to have a conversation with the author about it and, you know, we, we, we cried over it and, uh, it's a very special book. It is a very special book. Um, yeah, that, that's all I can really say about that one. So the, <laughs> to lighten things up, I then read Tommy Boy, which is the Hannigans, uh, number three by Avery Flynn. Uh, this is a rom-com. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it 4.5 steam fans because this shit's hot. Hot. So hot. Listen to it as an audiobook uh, because Audible Escape is going away. Um, and this is about a lucky charm becoming more than just a lucky charm. So we have Fallon, who is a nurse, and we have Zach, who is, an, is a hockey player, and he ends up getting sick because of food poisoning dumb dumb and Fallon ends up taking care of him but then some things end up happening paparazzi are around stories get told and Fallon becomes Zach's lady luck but is it really lady luck or are there feelings involved and also by the end of this book through the epilogue I find out that this series the Hannigans is actually the setup series for the Ice Knight series, which was so much fun to learn. I was like, I know these characters. I know these names. Um, they sound very, very familiar. And we're talking about the Ice Knights. So I've actually already read that series. And I'm really excited to see all these connections happening. Um, so yeah, there's that. The next book that I finished was La 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 Lies and Lullabies which is Hush Notes number one by Serena Bowen. Place this in contemporary. Give this one 4.25 stars. Give it 3.5 Steam fans. Read it as an ebook for Kindle Clear Out. Yes. Um, and this book follows Kiera and Jonas. Jonas is a rock star. He ended up taking um, a summer off five years ago to clear his mind and find his way in turn, he meets Kira, who is in her small town of Maine, and it's the same place that Jonah is sort of, I wouldn't say vacationing, he's escaping. And they have a magical summer, and things end up happening. I need more. I, I need more. Because there's some things that are happening. Now, I will say that there is a secret pregnancy, and there are some family dynamics that are thrown in, um, and some talk about sexuality within the story. So if that is not something that you are a fan of, you may want to shy away from it. I think Serena did a great job at handling all of the things that she ended up putting in there. Serena is known for writing, um, male, male romances, and I loved that aspect of it, uh, the little parts, but I need more. I need, I need that story. I need that story. And if you've read this book, then you know which story I'm talking about, but I need it. I just kind of need it. If you haven't, then just read the book. 
because it was really, really enjoyable. I then started my journey into the Salvation Society, which, by the way, is available today. They just went live, the new five, um, and we're about to talk about them because those are the next books that I ended up reading. So the first one that I digested and consumed and enjoyed and loved oh so much was Legacy by Rachel Robinson. I placed this in Contemporary. I give it 4.5 stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read it as an arc. She sent me a copy of it. <laughs> so excited. Yes. Ah, I knew it was going to be amazing just from the dedication. She dedicated it to her daughter. And ever since I found Rachel and started reading her books and met her at event signings and um, following her on Instagram and things like that on Facebook, seeing her kids grow up and just, ah, it feels like we're friends and maybe that played a part in, um, loving this book oh so much and really getting the feelings from it, but I thought it was an amazing mashup of her world for seals and Corinne's world for seals mashing together and coming together. So we have Arabella, who is, um going to be the first Navy SEAL. She is the daughter of Natalie and Liam from Corinne's series. And then we have Luke, who is the son and already a SEAL instructor, um, and the son of Maverick and Windsor from Rachel's series. <sighs> Two couples that I absolutely love and their offspring. Their offspring are amazing. They're badass, and they embody everything that I love that these two authors put together, and then Rachel just did all this goodness, did all this goodness. And then she added, like, this romantic suspense part, port, part to it, and it has a little bit of forbiddenness to it because... Technically, Arabella and Luke shouldn't be together because they're team members. And I just, I love the evolution of it. And I love the message behind it. Going back to that dedication for Rachel's daughter. And everything that Arabella embodied throughout this whole entire story. Just, I really loved the independence and powerfulness of it and yes 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 so good the next book that i finished or actually i didn't finish was devil in her bed by a marie avant this is a romantic suspense i guess i guess i actually dnf'd it at 50 percent, but i'm still giving it 2.5 stars it did sort of intrigue me but it didn't intrigue me enough to keep me listening um i give it two steam fans and i listen to it as an audiobook on hoopla for kindle clear out um yeah guys um it's about a stalker so you have um shaban i think that's her name lincoln and then the stalker um it was very jumbled in its execution you didn't or at least i didn't know when we were jumping back and forth we had characters that were killed off earlier you know in the story and then all of a sudden we're talking about them again and it just maybe it's because i didn't physically read it and maybe those intentions were written like in italics so you knew that it was a like a flashback sort of jump type thing I don't know it didn't work for me did not work for me and it didn't keep me engaged enough to go ahead and complete this story to find out if the stalker was who I thought it was or if it was somebody else or what was <sighs> yeah there's that there is an audience for it I'm just not that audience so then I got back into my salvation series um and also, by the way, the Salvation series, they were arcs for me, so they did that whole qualification for the Kindle clear out of reading e-arcs. This one is called Claymation, nope, Reclaimation, and this is by Evie Graham. Places in Contemporary, give it 
4.25, yep, 4.25 stars. Give it two Steve fans. Read it as an arc. And this is Kennedy's, who is Jackson and Catherine's daughter. She uh, runs or is part of her mother's PR company, and she is handling a footballer, European footballer. His name is Ryan, and Kennedy contacts her best friend who has a and b Her name is Elodie. She is a newly divorced woman running this B&B, and Kennedy's like, hey, I need to send this footballer somewhere because he's in the limelight, and I need things to die down for him. So when Ryan goes to this B&B, him and Elodie end up having a relationship. So technically Kennedy isn't really in the book. She does make a few appearances. It's not necessarily revolving around her. And this brings us back to the fact that for some of the books in the Salvation Society, it's completely okay if you have never read a Corinne Michaels book. So this happens to be one of those that you really don't need any of the backstory. You know that Kennedy is Jackson and Catherine's daughter, but that's about it because this has nothing to do with the seals, which was, I was a little leery about, but at the same time, I'm just fine with it. I actually want more from this story. Um, I actually <laughs> DM'd the author and was like, <laughs> um, <laughs> Am I going to get more of this? Because uh, I kind of want Kennedy's story because she, she left some little hints, hints. Some little hints, hints. So back to what this story actually is about. Ryan is trying to figure out what to do with himself. He does not, you know, he's pushing back on the fact that he is playing football and he has family issues and you know his family is really really pushing him into that football world but at the same time breaking him down saying that he's not worthy enough and Elodie is trying to figure out you know what she wants out of life and what she wants out of man and they find each other attractive and you know they think oh it's just going to be a fling but at the same time, there needs to be some communication and some talking. Um, and it did fall off just a little bit in that it ended up being too quick. Um, but like I said, I, it just made you want more. Made you want more. And hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, we get more from this. The next book that I finished was Kindred by Kristen Van Dyken. And this is a historical romance mystery. This is also part of the Salvation Society. I was super excited about this one. When I heard that this was going to be a historical romance, I was like, how is that going to play in the Salvation Society? Hmm. So I gave this book 4.5 stars. I gave it to Steam fans, read it as an arc. And this is Jackson Cole's namesake. Namesake how he got his name and I loved it 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 all because Jackson is named after a badass woman spy what yes y'all yes yes need I say more so we have Jackson who the name spelling is different she is taking Emerson under her wing to train him in the ways of being a spy and they're solving a mystery on how Napoleon is about to be freed from Elba and how to stop it, stop the resistance. And you know what? I didn't even care <laughs> about the whole how that ended up happening. I was so into Jackson and Emerson and their sexual tension for back then. I was like, Ooh, Woo! Yes, this is so steamy. <laughs> Even though I only gave it two steam fans, I, the tension, the tension of it all was just like, yes, I was here for it. So here for it. So there's that one. <laughs> so good. So good. Then I read Mended, which was 
by Gabrielle G. I place this in romantic suspense. I give it four stars. I give it three Sting fans. I read it as an arc. And this is part of Salvation Society as well. This has a lot of family drama, a lot of, um, a lot of people, a lot of characters. Is this the one that has a lot of characters? Yes. This one has a lot of characters. A lot of characters from Gabby's world or Gabriella's world, as well as a lot of characters from Corinne's world. Not so many from Corinne's world that I didn't know, but it, it was hard putting them together. There was a lot going on. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So we have Oliver, who is a Navy SEAL who used to work with Mark and or closely with Mark. So I knew that. I was like, well, I didn't know that because I didn't I've never heard of an Oliver, which is fine, which is fine. Like I said, you don't have to read the Salvation series to understand the books in the Salvation Society. But it I couldn't find the I couldn't connect them. So then you have Tessa, who is connected to one of the seals that ended up dying that knew Quinn. So Tessa knows Quinn from Corinne series and Oliver knows Mark from Corinne series. And there's lots, lots of stuff going on. And I just felt disconnected. In the end, it, it ended up being a good story and it was, you know, I kind of want to read more about it. But at the same time, there was so much of all of the other, other things, mostly on Gabby's side, that it kind of threw me out. I felt that way about one of the other books too. It seems that I have this thing, at least one of the books kind of throws me out. And then finally, I read Irresistible by R.C. Stevens. Uh, place this in contemporary. This is part of the Salvation Society as well. Give this one 4.5 stars. Give it three Steam fans. Read it as an arc. And this one is a full novel, you guys. The other ones were borderline novellas, almost full novels. Um, but this one took me a little bit. It only took me a day to read, but it still... It had like 50 chapters. Like, it was a full-on story. Full-on story. So we have Avery, who is a physical therapist nurse, um, but, you're, but you don't open to Avery. You open to Bennett, who is a injured seal that is in the hospital, and you know that he is connected by Quinn. Um, he's in the same explosion as Quinn and a couple of other people um yes yes he's in the same explosion as quinn and the other seal except for he ends up getting severely injured and retires out of the out of the navy uh because of his injuries so he's in the hospital recovering from his injuries when avery is assigned to him um as for his patient as her patient and there goes the story right um and you have a sort of forbidden aspect of it that whole patient um client no patient doctor doctor patient that's what i was getting at doctor patient thing um even though she's a nurse nurse patient fraternization things rules rules that you can't cross um, I loved that Avery is a single mom to a teenager and then some other things are revealed. I'm not going to tell you what they are, um, but I enjoyed the story of Avery and Bennett and how they overcame and how they dealt with everything that was going on. So you guys, there was not a uh, read me romance, read me romance, read, read me romance story this week. Um, to my knowledge, it was a one episode this week and it was a excerpt from Tessa Bailey's new book, Tools of Engagement. I didn't want to spoil myself for that. So I did not 
listen to the podcast this week. Um, on to what I am currently reading. I am currently reading Ruthless Pride by Naima Simone. Um, Riffs and Refrain by Devony Perry, which is book number two in the Hush Note series, as well as Muses and Melodies by Rebecca Yaros, which is part of the Hush Note series. So there is that. That is all that went on this week. Um, I recorded a lot of videos, you guys. I am so far ahead in my recordings that if I was to like, well, my computer's not good enough, but, um, if I had some supercomputer and was able to like edit and render videos like super fast, I could totally be scheduled out for like, at least the next six weeks. Um, so yeah, there's that. You guys have lots of content coming. Um, I don't know which, like how I'm going to be putting it out and things get bumped all the time because I have some of my uh, mandatory videos that I need to put out. Um, I am thinking about doing a membership in the new year. So if you have made it this far in this video, let me know if you have read any of the books. Are you excited about any of the books um, that I just talked about down in the comment section? Also, let me know what is your price point that you will not go over for a membership here on YouTube because I'm thinking in the new year these Sunday weekly videos are going to become membership content. Um, I have not completely decided so don't freak out yet okay um, but these are the videos that I am extremely consistent with and it's not going to be any extra to make sure that you know I'm getting a little something for all the stuff that I do for this because there's a lot of work that goes into it. You guys know it. Um, but let me know the price point down in the comment section of what you won't go over for a membership to this because I'm sure you guys have other content creators that you follow that have already started their memberships and things like that. I'm definitely thinking about doing that come the new year for this video and probably other videos. Um, but I have not decided yet. Haven't decided yet. Um, other than that, I think that's all. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Also, there's a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. Or you can just leave me a private comment um, on that feedback form as well. My Ko-fi, my PayPal, my Amazon wish list, my Amazon affiliate links are all down in the description box. So you guys can, you know, hook it up. If you are watching this on Sunday and you want to see the live, the link is going to be down in the description box. So you can go set your reminder. Or if you're watching this after Sunday, um, and you want to see the live, you can also use that link to see what we talked about for the Kindle Clear Out live show. Other than that, thank you for watching and we will see you guys in the next video.